Hi, guys. Welcome to our podcast, The Cosmic Sisters. My name is Sarah, and we have Courtney here today. I just met her recently a few weeks ago, and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself today. Hey, um, it was great to meet you and to work with you. Um, I'm thrilled that we're doing this series to reach out to other women who are like us, um, who are a little bit cosmic and who have big hearts and who are successful and powerful. We want a place for you to be able to land and feel like you can access all of this information that you're you're researching and probably looking for. Um, it seems like a lot of people are getting really lit up right now um, and looking for their higher power. I call it finding the force. So that's a part of our, our series. Um, but yeah, I am a, an academic, uh, an author and a traditionally trained medicine person from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I've written a few different novels. I also work with women doing retreats to help them find their higher power and to step into a new level. Um so that's a little bit about me. And um, and can you tell us a little bit about you? Yes. Uh, so I have been in the spiritual world for about eight to nine years with my journey. Um, everyone kind of knows me as a really talented wedding photographer. But as I started learning more about energy and spirituality, I just realized I have so much more in me to do more healing and be in the line of work of like, adding spirituality into my life and sharing that with others. So I started learning different modalities like Reiki. And then now I just did a sound healing, a sound bowl certification a couple of weeks ago. So that was really nice. And then I was led to your retreat and that was an experience in itself. Um, I've just been called to do this work because I've seen the impact in my life. Uh, personally, my family has seen it. My friends have seen it. They see how I'm able to manifest the life that I really love and deserve because I really actually do the work with it. I'm not just sitting and daydreaming. I'm not waiting for things to happen. I feel like I have learned so many valuable tools to keep me on track. And now even at a higher level that I could never even imagine. And working with you, Courtney, has been the best experience because I came home from that retreat with like a game plan. I have a board that keeps me on track. I have the systems in place and I feel like I'm getting everything done effortlessly. I'm not having to try. It's such a balance. I get to enjoy my life. And when you do find the force, you realize life gets to be easy. You realize money is always flowing to you and you realize you have to take up a, a step in that you have to do the work. So that's why we're, we've developed this podcast is really to share our journeys and kind of the message of learning about unique things like plant medicine and stuff that is here to help us raise our vibration and really take things to a whole new level. <laughs> Yeah. And we're talking about our, uh, our customer avatar, like both of us, what we have in common also, aside from the spiritual part and being traditional people too, which is another super duper great topic, um, traditional culture. And we're going to be going into that a lot because the more you understand traditional culture and the frameworks that surrounded those cultures, the easier it is for you to adapt to the laws of the universe. Um, at any rate, we're going to be going over all these different tools. We could start talking about like exactly what we did because we really could cover a lot of stuff. We we want to give business women, powerful women, like real life tools. And we, we both got so excited about it when we were talking <laughs> over the weekend. We were supposed to be here like doing a photo shoot and doing ayahuasca and doing the plant medicine. And we just kept on like taking it to another level, to another level until everything just blossomed into this concept of like, hey, man, like let's reach out to our sisters too, because there are other cool women out there like us who are looking. They want to find the force, like they want to level up and they have great hearts. We were talking about our customer avatars. See how I tied that back in? Mm -hmm. Sheila. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the cosmic sisters are are Sheila's the the ideal woman who's already done so much work. Like she's probably done a lot of yoga. You know, she's probably been to all these different retreats, paid tens of thousands of dollars for different coaches or different systems. So she's really primed. 
And she might feel a little bit like all of that was for nothing though, because she hasn't fully gotten what she wanted. You know what I mean? Like there's this cosmic, almost like orgasmic feeling of expansion that happens when you really finally light this up. And the characteristic of the force is like you said, that flow where you're like, wow, I'm just gliding through this. I'm working, I'm getting a lot done. I have a lot of plates in the air, but I'm rocking this like a disco queen. <laughs> well, yeah, that that's exactly what it feels like because yeah. for me, I have like three different business ventures going on right now. I have my existing wedding photography company that I also shoot, but I have teams, so I have that's to gorgeous. coordinate them and it's a lot of work with that. Now I have a studio that I built in Atlanta, so I'm managing that. Then I have my Mystic Manny Gen, which this is just my platform for my coaching and teaching. So it's like anyone would look at all of that and be like, how the hell are you doing anything? And I would say before your retreat, I was definitely trying my best, you know, but I did run into a lot of blocks of just like hitting a wall where like, I know I need to get on the other side, but I don't know how to get there. And as much you as I have invested in really coaches- yeah. Yeah. And as much as I've invested in coaches, I've probably paid same like you're saying, tens of at least close to twenty thousand would be in the last few years that I've paid for co coaches, courses, and things to level me up. Yeah, certifications, yeah. all of that. Yeah. And it's like it Go gets you to a certain point <laughs> and you're like, I'm there. I'm like, I can see it. I can it's right there, but I couldn't get over the hump of like getting out of my head of like how do I put these systems into place for me. And after your retreat, it's like literally everything just like clicked. And now this flow, I'm like, oh my God, other people need this. And that's why I was like, let's just start this podcast and like start teaching. Start giving people. it to the girls. Yeah. That's why we're here. Well, wait, <laughs> so let's talk super quick about the four keys though. Yes. Because we don't want to just like, all right. So you know how a lot of people do on podcasts where they're like, oh, if you do this and that, then you will be allowed to have this or that. Like, no, we want to give it to you, but you have to understand that it's going to take more than just explaining it to you. It's an immersive process. So first you learn about how to journey. So we can journey with the drums. So I just want to let you know, I'm not like promoting psychedelics. Actually in traditional Native American culture that I come from, we use the least amount of medicine possible. First out of respect for the plants, then out of respect for, for the other people, because it's not a game, right? And out of respect for the plant, because you're literally cutting down and killing this plant and ingesting it. So if you respect her body and her parts, you want to use the least possible. So the, the goal of working with plant medicine and journeying is to do exactly what Sarah's talking about, to find the force. You can find the force on your own if you get good at it. But like you alluded to, that first time when you kind of pop that bubble open and you go, oh my gosh, I am a part of this huge, vast, amazing, beautiful source of love or the force, right? The force comes in and it just starts like to blast out anything that's blocking you. And when you first have that assisted, okay, because it is an assist, it's like a lift, right? And when you get that assist and you get up there to that higher level, you can go back on your own. But that's why we use plant medicine sparingly and you don't actually have to use it at all. We have a lot of clients who are in AA or you know, their religious beliefs prohibit them from taking substances. And until they see it as a medicine, they feel uncomfortable with it mm -hmm. and all of that. So all of this is geared for everybody to be able to start right away. Okay. Can we talk about this super quick? Yeah. This I can give the breakdown. Yeah. Let's break it down. Help me. So what's your <laughs> recollection? Oh, we're going to quiz Sarah. She's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> He's mega brain. I am. Make her smile fool you people. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, I really liked her four keys because it, it really does put things into perspective. And now I'm starting to see, like, it gives you the direction. It gives you what you need to kind of focus on with that. So the first one I'll start with is North because the way my brain processes it, and I, I'm curious what you think when I tell you all of this, because I interpret information very differently and I transmute it differently. So but when I think of 
Yeah. You You take it in and then you make it yours. Yes. That's (laughs) That's what it is. So North to me is like the vortex, the ideas, your thoughts. Um, I feel like I, like I primarily stay in this thought world where I'm getting ideas, I'm getting visions. That's North to me. Um, then we go, I guess East is the planet of action and that's where you're, um, coming up with like actionable game plan. And like, like even today, I, before we got on this, I wrote my main things that I need to get done. I was like podcast with Courtney, then I need to film my own, then I need to do this. And this just gives me my actionable tools that I want and I need to get done today. So that's just putting direction of like, okay, I'm moving to this. South is more of like your roots, your ancestry, your like your beliefs. um, And that's where the uh, sub zombie programs are stored. Um, And this I love that you came up with this, Courtney, because it makes it so relatable to understand that like we do have self-limiting beliefs that like we're not good enough. And this can be because of relationships, our family, not being seen when we're children and whatever the case and we have to over ancestral. It's so deep. And when you think of South, the way I think about it is earth and like what's beneath the earth. And that's really like who we are at a deep rooted level. So that's how I remember South. And then West will be, um, what am I (laughs) What am I at that's, now? That's, that's the uh, vi- vision. Into, well, no, it's kind of the vision. The void. That's where we void out the zombie sub programs. And that's mm-hmm. how we elevate to a new level when we come back around and connect the whole circle. Ooh, and that makes okay. sense. Cause then West will go tie back into the, uh, the, the North. north. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So I've been working you, on you, it. <laughs> you know, you've got it and we'll, we'll, we'll loop back around, but you stay on your role. Cause it, it makes a cohesive unit once you finish your cycle. So go. And vehicle, vehicle was earth, right? Or east. So it's, it's earth. (laughs) We start in the east and and typically so do you because the story of Namaskara is always all the prayers. East, east. Yeah, that's so true. Um, so for us as well, because the sun is really big in the desert, um, as, as an aside, let me like finish the part about who I am. Um, <laughs> so I'm an academic, like I'm a national merit scholar. So I studied culture at American university, um, in Spanish. And then in English, I studied international finance and relations, mm-hmm. cross-cultural communications and journalism, all of that literature. So, um, I've been looking at native culture all my life because I am native American. My grandmother was full blood. Um, and I grew up with uncles who were powwow dancers and grew up also with that deep pain of having had one's culture, one's most precious thing taken away. And so I always had this feeling of like, not without my daughter, not without my mother, not without, and the mother is the culture. It's the, it's the thing that was taken from us, I think. Mm. And Mm -hmm. so I always had a lot of depression, anxiety, and pain around that, like the feeling of something important was lost. So I was like on fire searching since since I was a kid for my Native American roots. And I ended up studying yoga and studying Kung Fu and studying, (laughs) um, you know, Tibetan Buddhism and all these different things and just like voraciously gobbling up world religions and world culture until I got to the point where I was like, wow, there must be, there's something in common. Then I went and studied for 20 years with an actual medicine man. So I was trained the way that they would train a tribal doctor. So they called us witch doctors, which I I believe that was a disparaging remark from yeah. the Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was to like throw everyone off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they, they really, um, they cast a lot of aspersions on uh, our culture and demonized us because, well, one, we were matriarchal mm-hmm. and two, uh, the point of our religion, if you can even call it that, is to plug you into the force. Girl, I'm not messing with your stuff. I have no place telling you about who you are. I can witness your grace and your glory. I can give you systems so that you can find the force. But then when you make it your own, I'm proud of you. So that was also really threatening to the Mm -hmm. powers because Mm -hmm. there, this is a liberation process, you know? Um, But I'm a tribal doctor, basically. I studied physiology, biology, chemistry, all of these things, homeopathy, naturopathy, permaculture, seed sovereignty, um, traditional herbalism, as if I were going to be a midwife. 
um, because I'm so fascinated by women's reproductive because we're so overlooked. Like just now we're starting to understand menopause. Mm -hmm. It's a whole deep topic. And this isn't just for women, but it, it, men can listen too. like, but we're going to talk about our vaginas from time to time. <laughs> I mean, there's so much glory in our cycles and honoring that. And I think for so long, it's not talked about enough of like honoring your actual cycle and working with it, with your business, like loving your body, loving it. Mm -hmm. loving, I like, that's the whole purpose of being alive and everything we have to suffer through tends to drive us out of our body because of trauma. And then you bring the force in and we get to what you were saying. So I didn't finish one, two, three, four keys all over the world, four directions, equilateral across, made a book about it. We're using it right now. <laughs> all right. We're so here. That, that final part that you were talking about, about getting rid of the zombie sub programs. Come on, finish it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you do have to face everything. You do have to look at your shit. You have to look at your family shit. You got to see what they went through. Um, and during my journey, I saw that I saw what my main message during my journey was like the women in my, in my, uh, ancestral line were forced to have kids, um, not really having a choice and give up their lives, give up their creativity, give it all up to have these families. And, even my grandmother, she showed me, she showed me she had a choice to stay or she could die and be done. And she picked death at an early age because 11 children, like, you know, like can, how can you even fathom that? And my mom was the last of 11 and I am the last of five. And she also didn't really want to have me. She just told everyone the story that she tried <laughs> to get her tubes tied two different times before and it wouldn't work. Or by the time she was really about it, she already found out she was pregnant. So me sitting with that for so many years was like, damn, I wasn't really wanted. Like I, what's the point of me being here and me overcoming that the sub uh, zombie programs of like, no, I am here to bring light. I am here to do so much. I inspire others. I help people start their businesses that help them leave their marriages that are terrible for them. And they're able to start their lives and like seeing and knowing that I make such a difference. I'm like, damn, like that's where we do the work. That's where you have to look at all these things that like have been programmed into you subconsciously. And that's why I love the, the plant medicine of ayahuasca. Cause for me, I feel like I had a, such a positive experience but I could see how for other people, it is going to wake up all those feelings. It's going to shake it up and bring it up to surface because that's what you need to get on the other side. But you know how I knew that you were going to be super successful when you went home? How? <laughs> because you balanced all four of those keys. And the result of balancing those four keys is a superpower called focus you exhibited the superpower of focus. You literally selected out, okay, I'm going to sit here and think about my ex-husband and how horrible it was and yada, yada. Yeah, I'm good. And she just went on. I was like, what? <laughs> like, you're not even going to wrestle with that thing. For no. Me. no. And it's like, you're like, you no, can let I'm go. Good. Yeah, it's like I, you're like I see you. No, I I'm erasing you, zombie sub program. I'm not here to dance with you. I'm here to erase you. Mm -hmm. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna pick two or three other things. I think you had a list of things yes. that you axed out, and you're like, oh, we're just not doing that anymore. We're not we're not working for free. We're also not watching people step on other people. And I think that you know, in the beginning, already you had that superpower, but by the end, you were like. <laughs> yeah. mega mind like uh, oh yeah because I can see it so clearly when people get walked over when um boundaries you know get crossed and I can call that shit out because that's happened to me for so long and like it really wasn't until I started owning it then I started being able to help others with that as well so I think that's been a huge gift on this journey and one thing I do want to say about your four keys and your whole program and just everything in general, because you created such a beautiful program, I knew what I was getting into. I was prepared. 
when I watched your videos from your toolkit, I went through everything and I was just like, oh my God, one, I can appreciate systems and I love when things are laid out for me. And I would just like, you give me that and I want to run with it. So having those videos really just per, like helped me understand what I was getting into and understand like, okay, I need to be giving myself time daily to do the meditations, which I already kind of do anyway, but then I was implementing more. I need to do my journaling. I need to do my stretching and yoga. I need to practice these tools, even down to the diet. Like I was like, I'm taking this seriously. I'm doing only vegetarian and I'm sticking to it. And it wasn't hard. It wasn't like, oh my God, I can't do it. It was like, no, I need to respect this ceremony and I'm going to do what I need to do to like be prepared for it in the best way. So I think that's also another reason why I had such a successful ceremony is because I actually did the work. Whereas, you know, other people, I sometimes think like, are people even doing that? Or are they just coming for a quick fix? What do you feel like having done so many ceremonies? How are most people when they come into your ceremony? Well, this is a perfect place to wrap it up because in the next episode, we're going to talk about the nuts and bolts of that. Mm -hmm. So she's already cleverly leading <laughs> to it because we have a system. Yes. So we have a skeletal framework behind it and we can feel we're going from east to south to west to north and we feel that completeness you know, mm, it's so good. <laughs> it, it is like a circuit. And when you make this full circuit, zzz, zzz, she did this. <laughs> and I go, yeah, exactly. That's exactly. When you found the force, you feel that. Zzz, zzz, wah, and like this cosmic antenna, like kind of lights up and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm connected to infinite intelligence. I've been blocking myself. So what we do is we turn our pain into power. Sarah, mm -hmm. Perfect story. Do I find that most people are fully prepared? No, but when they are, they hit home runs. And sometimes it's the first time that that this woman has hit a home run. Like, yeah, like she hits it out of the park and watches it sail off. <laughs> you can feel the grace. She remembers who she is. She remembers what she was here for. And she like steps into her superpowers. Um, that is what we're in the game for. Awesome. Almost, like, remember, like. It's like an old story about fishermen, like fishermen have to cast the net out a lot mm -hmm. in order to get what they want. So for, mm -hmm. for 20 years, I've been casting the net out and seeing what I get. And the percentages are, um, are pretty ugly for anyone over 60. It seems like if they haven't already done their work, they're going to probably ride out the rest of the game with what they've got because they just don't understand what it's like to make that change. Whereas younger people, when we stay malleable, when we stay like the willow tree, you know, then you can move. See, mm -hmm. she starts to move a little bit when I boogie. Yeah, you <laughs> feel the energy. <laughs> yeah, see, she can feel the yeah. flow. Mm -hmm. And so that's what this is about. It's an inner game. And if you've been denying that you have an inner world for your entire life, you're probably going to be so fucking terrified when you pull the hood up on that and you look down there, like we have like older mainstream men who've been in a position of privilege for a very long time, mm -hmm. who just cannot release their grip. And they're terrified, terrified every time those things start to come up. Least likely to be successful, old mainstream man who is in a place of power and privilege most of his life. He's mm -hmm. not going to like feeling out of control. He's going to feel that we're attacking him. He's going to feel nervous around a bunch of hot little things like us. <laughs> so that's already going to be causing this feeling of unease. Mm -hmm. He's going to know in his skin, like the guy over the weekend, mm -hmm. that we're smarter, we're faster, and we're better. And, and that's a, a threat to people like that. Like they look at that like they're dying. Mm -hmm. but, and they're flailing out. And it's, it's really sad to watch, but like, we try to help them, but it just, it's so hard because they won't do their work. They want to walk in here and treat us like we're a stewardess mm -hmm. and it disrupts the entire beautiful energy for them to be recalcitrant, to tantrum out, to uh, freak out, to lash out, to project, to attack. Mm -hmm. And so people who've done their work can be men or women, but I do notice that women have a much easier time of it. And when we get a Sheila, that's what we're looking for. Where if you're if you're a cosmic sister, if you're a Sheila, you will often have already done all these things. Like Sarah just listed the things that she did. 
it's not a mystery. How much time did I spend with you before you came here? Like 30 minutes? Yeah, we just did the 30 minute call and then I, I was, was in the car with my mom. Yeah, I was just <laughs> religiously <laughs> looking at your videos and loving it that like you've provided all these resources. And um, a lot of my other friends have been to retreats and there's not that. And they came back more destroyed more traumatized. And I'm like, damn, I really lucked out finding the best teacher to guide me on this journey. And not just like, it wasn't just for money. It wasn't just, oh, I need to fill in this space and give you this medicine. And that's what a lot of the shit out there is right now. And that's what we're trying to take down. Yeah. So yeah. And and wrapping this up, then we're going to talk in the next episode more, but we're doing a documentary and we do have a, a world-class, just deliciously gorgeous filmmaker. Oh my God. From Sao Paulo. Oh, my brother from another mother. <laughs> you saw the velvet, right? So it's definitely not that I hate men. I love men like that. Yes. You and know. his power in a beautiful way. You know, oh. like he doesn't have to walk in the room and command it it's such a soft-spoken beautiful energy where he respects us where he wants to know what we think like yes like okay gentle and kind he said that the four keys were too complicated so he said don't worry baby we got that (laughs) we're gonna we're gonna cover that thoroughly you do your documentary thing so we get to meet with um with a, a what is a script writer? Script writer, yeah. Mm-hmm. Script writer on Tuesday. And I'm going into the studio to record some music oh for our goodness. little our little love track there. I don't know what to say. I'm thrilled about that. So you guys are going to be seeing a documentary. This is kind of like the behind the scenes stuff. The Cosmic Sisters is where rubber meets road. So as a bonus at the end of each segment, we're going to give you a coupon code. And this one was Cosmic 15. 15. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 15% off of all of our services, um, anything that we offer. And when you go to PayPal, you just pop in the message cosmic 15 and take 15% off. That's awesome. I love doing stuff like this. Cause it's like really rewarding the people who take the time to listen and hear what we're saying and actually start implementing the stuff we're talking about and start seeing differences in their life. And we're going to so, have that toolkit up. We're figuring out the platform. So, you know, be patient with us as we go along. You yes. know, we have all of this stuff ready to give you. We have a digital toolkit and we have, we definitely have retreats. We have one coming up in September. And for now, we're going to be having them regularly. Mm-hmm. Probably we're going to start going towards Brazil more, but we have ones coming up in September and October for sure. We yep. may be in Brazil in November. Yeah. We have to eat turkey in Sao Paulo. Same here. (laughs) Might be a beautiful thing we're manifesting right now. Hey, for all of our sisters out there who are a little bit terrified to go home, if they've gotten divorced, if they're in an abusive relationship, Mm -hmm. if they just don't give a shit anymore about those holidays that they force us to celebrate. I mean, I love Thanksgiving because I'm all about the food. Same. (laughs) I'm that's my favorite holiday to just have the food and the family feeling, but it's also, we get to like create our tribe, you know, we get to like, I love my family, but I have to love them from afar because I've just found that it it has a tendency to bring me down. Um, I tend to, when I get sucked into their problems, I tend to lose more money. I tend to like stress out more. So for me was removing myself, but also building a new community where I go. So like for me, moving to Florida opens up a whole new pool of family here. And I still will always love my family, but sometimes we do have to like forge a different path and find something that feels like you're accepted and you're loved and not like you're forced to be in something where it doesn't feel right. And you're not like you're getting criticized or people are shunning you. Yeah. 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 Not only do you feel uncomfortable, then people are going to be mean. Like, Mm -hmm. let's just not do that. Let's skip out on that. (laughs) We have a program over Thanksgiving where we do something really nice together. Yeah. Medicine and a little turkey. That could be nice. But yeah, let's put it out there to our sisters that we're, we're figuring all of this out. Yes. Okay. There's going to be a lot of resources and because this is what's needed, you know, like we have to bring it together. This is what's needed. 
Okay, so next episode, we're specifically talking about, let's see here. I have my notes. <laughs> I love her with her notes because that's journey. what keeps you on track. Okay, we're going to specifically talk about plant medicine journeys next time. We're um, we're eventually going to talk again about bad retreats, how to avoid them. But this is like for everybody. We're not just talking about ayahuasca and it's not a drug. It's one way you can level up your life very, very quickly if you're ready to go. So if you're ready to go, yes, it works. Yes, we, we see And we that. have a package that guarantees your success if you use it. Awesome. And you're ready to go. So yay. Yay. For now, see you next time. See you. <laughs>